So it feels like therapists never actually do anything. Looking to vent my frustrations and advice on what direction to take. Um, for the past six to seven years, I'm 26 now, my mental health has been in the gutter. To put, put it quite simply, I don't want to be alive. It feels like too much work and too much suffering every day. The reason I am still alive is because I feel the responsibility towards people that have helped me in the past to get better and keep fighting. Over this period of six years, I've seen many therapists and none of them have actually helped me at all. Most of it was just me talking about my problems and them sitting there and not offering any advice. I gave up on therapy for a while, but during the last half year, I've been getting into it again out of de desperation. My theory for why it hadn't done anything for me so far was because I hadn't given my therapist any direction. For that reason, I decided for my first appointment, I would bring a list with all things that I was suffering from, ranging from physical responses, intrusive thoughts, external circumstances, and abstract concepts like lack of meaning. I asked him, which of these can you help me with? Unfortunately, in typical therapist fashion, the answer was dodged, and soon we were back to me talking to a brick wall. Uh, after four sessions with this therapist, he recommended me to search for another one, one with a more pragmatic attitude, since I seemed to be really be looking for answers. Even though I was disappointed, I agreed and found another therapy practice. This one was based in ACT, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. The therapists here were actually really nice, but ACT never really clicked with me. I did all the exercise they gave me, but it didn't really seem to have any effect. All of the points they made here seemed like general no-brainer stuff. It seemed like they were quoting directly from Thanks, I'm Cured. Following Dr. K's advice on how to be a good patient, I actually brought this up recently. They were very responsive to what I said, and yesterday I had a talk with them about general direction. Unfortunately, here I really struggled with getting any answers out of them. I asked them again what they could help me with, and they gave, never gave an answer as to what th the therapy was actually meant to bring me. I asked them if maybe my suffering wasn't necessarily caused by cognitive responses to stuff, and so maybe more so by instinctive physical and emotional reactions, like a scar. I was willing to accept that this was not the case and it, that it was caused by a cognitive blind spot, so I asked them what they thought was more likely. Here again, they would not give me a conclusive answer. They again put the ball back in my court and gave me a few options. I could switch to a more physical form of therapy, try EMDR, continue with talk-focused act, or look for a different clinic. They also said that for instinctive body-focused stuff, I would maybe may be better off in the alternative medicine circuit. The problem right now is I simply do not know. I was hoping that therapists could offer some form of expertise on, on this. All I know is that I don't want to be alive and that I want that to change. I've lost faith in therapy for the most part, and I don't feel like they have much to offer me but I don't want to give up. I feel like I'm I, all I can do is pick one of these options on feeling and hope for the best, as I can't really make an informed decision. Anyone here with a lot of experience in the therapy world that has suggestions on what direction to take? I like how Dr. K is so focused on solving problems, and I don't feel any therapist has ever been like that. So, this is a really good question, okay? So here's what I'm sort of hearing, just to kind of summarize. So some people will go to therapy for years, and they'll feel like the therapy really isn't helpful. Um, and a lot of times what will happen is a patient will come into a therapist's office, and they'll say, like, or a lot of times you show up, right? And, like, you're not really sure what therapy is, or they're the expert, so you let them kind of lead. But they don't really seem to be leading anywhere. In fact, most of what they're doing is, like, asking you to lead, and it's really confusing because you know, you don't know how to lead. Like, if you knew how to lead, like, you wouldn't be in therapy, right? Like, you're there for their expertise. And then therapists also were trained in this way to be, like, very reflective in terms of, like, if someone comes to us for an answer, we kind of, like, put it back on them. It's the classic therapy dodge. It's, like, the most, you know, simple, like, re reflex that we're taught. What can you help me with? And then we answer a question with a question. What do you think we can help you with? And I think this is kind of a, it's, it's actually like sort of a problem because what this means is that like, you know, you're kind of like, you're not really offering any kind of guidance to patients because that's not what we're trained to do because what, what can we, how can we really guide them? And I think it's a huge issue because a lot of times people are coming for us, 
the to us for like guidance, like we want a plan about how to move forward. And this is where, you know, it, I remember when I was trained to be a therapist, like training to be a therapist, like, you know, I was taught that if someone comes in and says like, my goal is to get a girlfriend, can you help me with that? We were taught, trained to say, no, we can't because like, we can't control anything about their lives outside of here. And I think that this is why if we look at like life coaching, it's interesting because if you look at like, you know, the psychotherapy subreddit, for example, there'll be like a post on there every couple months about how like coaching is a scam and like, why are people getting help from coaches? And like, there's no license, there's no training. So like, why are coaches popping up everywhere? Right? Like, w like what, what I think therapists need to understand is that like, we've sort of failed our patients or clients or humans in a particular way based on our approach because we're not about problem solving right like that's not really what therapy is about like therapy is all um, generally speaking if you look at the roots of therapy it was sort of like based on sigmund freud who sat there and was like believed that the more neutral he was the more stuff would come out and if stuff comes out that the goal of therapy is to like let stuff come out and if you let stuff come out that will fix things so that's generally speaking, like the, the goal of therapy is that you've got stuff buried in there. And if we can bring it out of you, then you'll move in the right direction. I think part of the problem is that therapists are afraid to take responsibility for their patients, right? Like we're afraid to say like, oh yeah, like I, I can't, because then it like, then it's our skin in the game, right? Because like therapists have, we have this really interesting kind of training where it's like, we, you know, we don't really like accept responsibility. Like if, if your patient drops out of treatment, like whose fault is that? And generally speaking, what I find is that when you, when you are a therapist and you go to supervision, very few therapists will say like, maybe you could have done something better. Like most of the time, it's this sort of thing where like, you know, the patient really couldn't, wasn't ready yet. So we have all these kinds of things that we sort of tell ourselves as therapists that sort of make it like not our fault. And so this is where part of the reason that we kind of have a, um, and I think that, that that approach is useful, okay? So for the record, like I think that therapy is really good. Like I do that a lot. You know, I bring things out of people. Um, it's, it's useful, but I think it doesn't work for everyone. And this is why I think coaching has emerged as like a field and why people are so interested in it. Because coaches are better at like offering people answers. They're like better at being externally focused. They will actually sometimes like give you direction, give you advice, give you things that like therapists are trained not to do. So like therapists are sort of trained, like don't ever tell your patient to quit your job or break up with someone or something like that. What we're trained to do as therapists is sort of say like, oh, are you unhappy? Then what do you think you should do if you're unhappy? Like, what are the things that you can change? Like we sort of like let them come to the decision. We don't say like, I think you should quit. And this is, this is kind of interesting because I remember when I was like training to become a therapist, I was like doing something like what I do on, on stream and stuff. And then one of my supervisors was like, I don't think I can supervise you anymore. And I said, why is that? And she said, well, you're not doing therapy. And I was like, well, then what am I doing? She's like, I don't know. Your patient seemed to like it, but it isn't therapy. And so th I was like really surprised. And I think in the history of, you know, my residency program, I'm the only one that I can think of that has ever had like a, th a supervisor kind of, you know, fire them essentially. It was totally, it worked out great. Uh, Cause I, I went to, you know, we went to our program director and, and the, th the supervisor was really awesome. She was just like, I just don't know what you're doing. And I don't think I can help you grow in this capacity because you seem to want to do what you want to do. And so we found someone else that was like much more amenable to my style and like really helped me immensely. It was really awesome. And I really appreciate the supervisor for doing that because she was just like, you know, really cognizant of like, I don't know what this kid is doing, but it seems to be pretty good. So rather than force him to learn what I do, I think maybe you should find someone who can like support you in what you do, um, which is why MGH and Harvard Medical School are fantastic places because you sometimes have people like that. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, so what we do, like, I, and so I understand what this person is frustrated with, because a lot of times, like, therapists are, like, trained to, like, not give you an answer. And the reason we're trained to not give you an answer is because what if we're wrong? Oh, my God. And then the, then the patient will blame us. And if they blame us, like, that'll rupture the therapeutic alliance. So what we're going to do is, like, 
if I order for both of us at a restaurant, you don't like the food, you're going to blame me. So what I'm going to do is sit down at the restaurant and never order a damn thing. And so therefore, if I never order a damn thing, you never have any ability to complain. You can't hold me accountable for anything if I don't take responsible for anything. So this is where, like, I, I think it's crazy because as a, as a profession, I think therapists, like, this is just my opinion, okay? Like, maybe people disagree, but I'm sure people disagree. But I think, like, as a profession, we're trained to not take responsibility for our patients, right? And it sort of makes sense. Like, if you're working with someone who's suicidal, you can't really, like, ultimately, it's, it's going to be their choice, like, whether they kill themselves or not. You can't make them do anything. You can't control another human being. So I understand where that lack of responsibility comes from. But there's also like a lack of responsibility, right? Which is kind of weird. And so this is where like, you know, I think that this needs to change. And I think this is why coaching is, is growing so much is because like people want to make actual changes in their life. Like they want to fix things. And sometimes they're looking for answers. And part of what I'm a big fan of is like giving people bad answers, because when you give someone an answer, you're like, hey, man, try this. And then they're like, yeah, that didn't work. And then it's like, OK, you want me to give you another suggestion? And then eventually they're like, <laughs> and it's kind of funny. They're like, no, no, your suggestions suck. And I was like, and I'm like, fantastic. So if my suggestions suck, what do you think we should do? And there's a huge difference between doing that and sort of starting with what do you think we should do? Because if we establish that I'm incompetent, like it's actually really healthy for the therapeutic relationship because then people are like, okay, at least the dude's trying and I'm invested, but I'm just incompetent. And then help me. I ask the patient to help me help them because I really want to help them. I'm not quite sure how. Can you help me do it? And that's where like, that's where the real money is because then the two of us are working together, right? It's not like they're coming to me for answers. And it's not like I'm absolving myself of all, all responsibility. It's sort of like, I can't do this on my own. I can't fix you. I've tried. I've tried to fix you as a therapist. And then they're sort of like, well, you know, I know you can't fix me, but I can't do it on my own either. And then we get to this conversation that's like, let's do it together. And it's when we start doing it together that real progress starts to happen. And the problem that I'm seeing is that like, a lot of therapists, and this is what keeps people unsatisfied, is that a lot of therapists don't try to do it with you, right? They just tell you to do it by yourself, and they're just going to bounce things back at you. And so it's tough. But I think that, like, you know, if you're in this situation, so first of all, props to this person for looking for therapist after therapist after therapist. And I'd say that like, this is where, you know, you just got to be a little bit careful because I, I don't know if like, I think it, you can get a lot from therapy, especially if you've got a clinical illness, but I'd say that like lean a little bit towards, um, you know, lean a little bit towards spirituality, uh, maybe work with an HG coach. I mean, they're trained in a lot of the stuff that, um, you know, a lot of the stuff is going to sound somewhat similar to therapy, but they're not trained to be therapists. They'll try to help you sniff out of some scar, things like that. Um, and we're actually going to offer additional training to our coaches about problem solving. So, um, you know, trying to help people make external changes in their life, which is something that's a weakness of our program right now, because too often they try too hard to problem solve. They're like, oh, just do this. And this is the problem is because like, just do this is like, just work out, just eat healthy, just go practice and talk to five people a day, go up to five strangers, then just talk to them. That's how you'll overcome your social anxiety. So that's the problem with solutions, right? Like, it's like you can offer people solutions, but if they're not ready to like meet them, then that's a challenge. Just don't be depressed. Exactly. Just win forehead. Just get better RNG in your loot boxes, noob. Um, yeah. So here's what I'd say. You know, if if you're you know if you're struggling with therapy, like I think that it's good to let people know that things don't seem to be working for you. Let people know that you're trying hard, that you've seen a bunch of therapists, but that you're actually like looking for answers and you'd like, like their help um, doing it. I think on the one hand, I'm really happy with the way that this person has been treated by his therapist because they kind of say like, I don't think I can help you. It's not what I do. And at the same time, like, cause you got to be a professional about it. I'm also disappointed because like what I'm not hearing from these therapists is, Hey, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to try to learn. Right. Like, I understand you're suffering. You've seen a bunch of people. It's not what I'm trained in. But like, 
I'm willing to try to figure things out with you. Will you give me a chance, even though I don't know how to help you? And it, it's just not something, you know, what we see is like, oh, yeah, try this other form of therapy. Like, it's like a pass the buck kind of thing, right? Like, oh, like, sorry, I can't help you. Like, go see someone else. Like, sorry, I can't help you. Go see someone else. And then we end up with people like this. And you, a lot of times these people wind up in my office. And, and like, the people who wind up in my office have been in therapy for, like, 10 years. They're like, yeah, like, it doesn't seem to work. And then they show up here. And I'm like, well, I'm probably not better than them. But let's see if we can figure something out. You know, like, I, I can't help you, but I'm willing to try. And it works out well. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, you know, therapists, I think, need to start taking a little bit more responsibility for the outcomes of their patients. It blows my mind, you know, like, I know it sounds absolutely crazy, but, like, therapists don't measure outcomes for their patients. Like, you'll measure, you know, like, you'll, you'll do things like that's patient specific, right? So people will administer like depression scales and anxiety scales and things like that. So you'll do that like for an individual case, which is standard of care. But I've never seen a, a, you know, a group therapy practice that takes all of their client data and compares it. Like, oh, like I tend to improve depression by 25% and my colleagues actually improve it by 45%. What are they doing that I'm not doing? right? We don't do that. There's no like form of feedback. Like I don't even know. It's also like part of kind of bizarre, but like, how do you give feedback to a therapist? You know, how does a therapist know if they're doing something wrong? It's, it's weird. It's like almost like the education system. Like I think part of the reason that coaching is cropping up. And I think part of like what makes our coaching program like pretty successful is that like we measure outcomes very diligently and we like notice when someone is not doing a good job and then we like intervene with them. So, so the answer is try coaching instead of therapy. Like it's worth a shot, right? So like if you've tried therapy for six or seven years and tried a bunch of different things, I'm not saying stop doing it, but I'm saying maybe try something else. Maybe try something that's a slightly different approach. Um, and, and for people that are, you know, like trained differently, right? If you're looking for answers, not to say that our coaches can necessarily give you answers, um, but I, I do think that they, I mean, the data suggests that they seem to be helping people and they're certainly not trained as therapists. So like they're doing something that isn't therapy. So 